Last season, Josh Smith helped eliminate the Clippers from the playoffs. Last week, the Clippers announced that they have signed Smith to a one-year contract. A source told ESPN's Chris Broussard that Smith chose winning in a defined role over money. What chances do you give the Clips to win the West now, Stephen A.? Well, just a slightly better chance that originally existed before this deal happened. Um, I think that Josh Smith is a talent. I think it never hurts to add him to your squad. I also thought he bad, had a bad rap once he ultimately departed Detroit and left for Houston because the belief was that he was somebody that was difficult to work with. And that simply wasn't the case, uh, to be quite honest with you, from what my sources tell me. Uh, he thought that he was going to be playing a different role, uh, and that didn't turn out to be the case. And then they acted like he had a problem coming off the bench when he didn't have a problem coming off the bench. So uh, whatever you believe in that regard, he goes to Houston. Houston, helps them get to the uh, Western Conference Finals. His performance in that game six, overcoming the 19 point deficit and basically running the Clippers out of the building on a 49 to 15 run they still haven't recovered from. Uh, he, you know, this guy can make some noise. And remember, when they go small, as they tend to do in the West, having Josh Smith on the court with a Blake Griffin may be something that's very, very helpful in the event that DeAndre Jordan can't be on the floor for you because of his free throw shooting. So I do think it helps, but do I think it's enough to offset what the Spurs have done or, or the Golden State Warriors with their championship? I don't believe so. Or the Houston Rockets, for that matter. Yes. It hurts Houston because he was, he was with Houston. Yeah. So I'll give you this. The Clippers have officially become the most interesting team in all of pro yes. basketball. I can't wait. I'll be watching. Best in the West? I don't know. This is a volatile mix. And I get you about Josh. Maybe he did get a bad rap. That's all I ever heard and read was he can be difficult to coach. But with the Rockets, boy, he, he was really good and really coachable. So I got to give him that. But now, if he's sharing time, splitting time a little bit with Lance Stevenson, who also can be a little difficult on occasion, don't you think that's a tough mix for Doc? No. If anybody can pull it off, Doc can pull it off. No, I don't believe that because I think that Josh you're going to use at the four and you're going to use at the four spot. I think he's going to play more the four and the five as opposed okay. to the three for the Los Angeles Clippers where Lance Stevenson will play the two and the three when they go small and Josh will play the four and the five if and when they go to or the four or the five if and when they go small. Okay, but my point is if if both Josh and Lance wind up with some reduction of minutes where they're not playing as much as they think they deserve to play, could that not create a little sort of below the surface friction well, for the Clippers? I don't think so because Lance Stevenson, he's messed up. He shouldn't have left Indiana. Indiana. He went to Charlotte yep. with Clifford and MJ there, and and now this is his. This is this is perceived to be his last chance. If Doc Rivers makes the decision that he can't work with Lance Stevenson. Lance Stevenson is going to be nuclear to a yeah, lot of teams in the NBA. True. So he had better he had better be on his best behavior and ready to play because his career may very well okay. be on the line. Bottom line, on paper, wouldn't you agree the Clippers are way better than they were even last year with this added depth? I think depth? they're better. I, I think they're better well, now, way of, better. I think they're better. But Paul Pierce, I love that move. Yeah, that, that's true. That will help I, a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll see what uh, Coach Rivers doctors up. Mm -hmm. That's my one liner Clever. for the day. There's a zinger, right? No, I like it. I don't it. even get a sympathy laugh. No, mm -hmm. no. Okay, I'll work on it. it. I'll work on it. Brett Favre, he got a, a warm welcome at Lambeau for his introduction into the Packers Hall of Fame. We'll get the guy's reaction to that ceremony when we come back. This take is presented by Chase Sapphire Preferred, designed to reward you for being you. And in part by Golden Corral, the best buffet in the USA, now serving breakfast for lunch and dinner, and the Volkswagen Model Year in Sales event. He's officially a Packer forever, forever, ever, outcast forever. On Saturday, more than 67,000 fans filed into Lambeau Field to give Brett Favre a standing O as he was inducted into the Packers Hall of Fame and his number was retired. It all comes full circle, folks, in Green Bay. Skip Bayless, what was your reaction to this? Molly, to close this show, I'm going to dare my partner, Stephen A. Smith, to say one nice thing about Brett Favre after ripping, ripping him for years on this show. I love Wranglers. 
He was a prima donna for his last five years in the NFL, damn it. I stand by that. However, he was deserving of being placed in the Packers Hall of Fame. 67,000 people showed up to cheer him on. Uh, it just speaks to his greatness, his Iron Man tendencies, all the greatness that he did. Future first ballot Hall of Famer, nothing to debate about. He deserved everything he received this weekend, the accolades, the cheers, the affection and everything, regardless of what I said about him. And I stand by it. It doesn't take away from the greatness he he displayed and the affection he earned. I'm happy. Do, do for I see him. a he little tear in the corner of your eye? Stephen no, a. Smith? but 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 he would deserve it if I if it, if I was capable of it, because he, he does deserve it. Thank you. You enjoy NYC, 10 a.m. Eastern. We're back on the Deuce ESPN2. The old ball coach, Steve Spurrier, is here. I blew up last night with more moves in the West. The Rockets agree to a deal for Nuggets point guard Ty Lawson, according to Mark Stein in multiple reports. Denver will acquire a package of non-guaranteed contracts and a projected future first-round pick. The Nuggets will also send a 2017 second-round pick to Houston with Lawson, who is currently in rehab in L.A. after his second DUI arrest this year. Gentlemen, what do we make of this trade? Uh, Mr. Smith, we'll start with you. Well, first of all, I think it's um, it's not a trade that I would have made at this moment in time, but it's strictly because of Lawson's issues with alcohol. Two DUI charges, uh, two DUI arrests, rather, in, in the last six months, that's cause for concern because, as Skip uh, can speak to very intimately, uh, you know, alcohol, you know, uh, alcoholism, is a tough pill and you just don't know how somebody's going to be able to overcome that especially when you're 27 years of age you're relatively young obviously you're in the nba you're making millions uh ty lawson's going to have a tremendous battle ahead of him i like the fact that it's in houston uh because of john lucas and his clinic and the wonderful work that he's done from a rehab perspective with numerous athletes throughout uh, the, the last uh, c couple of decades, to be quite honest with you. So I applaud that. I know they're hoping that uh, Ty Lawson will work with him. Um, I believe he should. And if he does, I think that'll go a long way. From a basketball standpoint, he takes some of the ball handling pressure off of James Harden, uh, who has to handle the ball entirely too much. It relegates Patrick Beverly back to the bench, which gives them a one-two punch at the point guard spot. We all know their weakest position was at the point guard position, and they were still in the Western Conference Finals last year. Uh, so I think this is a move that bodes very well from a basketball standpoint for the Houston Rockets. And Daryl Morey uh, willing to do this move on uh, trading four players along with a condition Conditional first, a lottery protected rather, a first round pick, a conditional, a conditional first round pick, and the second round pick as well later on. I definitely think that he's done a good job. It's an upgrade, but the concerns that I have for Ty Lawson and that alcohol, uh, that's something that none of us can ignore. I hear what you're saying. I appreciate what you said about me, my personal history with that disease. That said, and there's a big if attached to this trade, obviously, but if Ty Lawson can regain control of that issue that just sent him to rehab, what a great pickup this is for the Rockets. Yeah. I'm going to look at it as, as a positive here that he can and will regain control of his problem. And <clears throat> I like your point about John Lucas being in the city of Houston. And if he does, then Daryl Morey, Kevin McHale, just stole him. He, he's a better player than a protected first and a second in 2016. And they threw in who? Prigioni and Papa Nicolau. Man, it's still, it's a steal for the Rockets, Stephen A., because it's just what the doctor ordered or Dr. Phil ordered. I, it's perfect for them because, as you say, now that one-two punch at point guard, you got an offensive point guard and a defensive point guard is pretty stout. It, it takes them up another, not a big leap, but, a, but another level. Because as you say, all of a sudden James Harden can start to play off the ball a little more freely and, and with some confidence he can play off the ball because those two guys will be pretty good as a one-two punch. So I really like the pickup. Obviously the big if is attached. And that's why they got this deal, because the market had fallen flat for him, obviously, off his DUIs. But if, if Ty Lawson is Ty Lawson, the former 18th overall pick in the draft, 
the guy who two years ago averaged almost 10 assists a game. Wow, w what a sweet pickup for this team. And all of a sudden, the, the West that is the best in all of our opinions just keeps getting a little stronger and a little stronger. We're going to talk about the Clippers later. They had Josh yep. Smith. Good thing, bad thing, we'll, we'll debate that. But still, their talent level is getting stronger. San Antonio, with Kyle Anderson now being the MVP of the Summer League, is just getting stronger by the second. So ah, I, I really like this move for the Houston Rockets. So do I. So do I. A point of reference, I mean, when, when I brought up the alcohol and you said that you appreciated that. Let's make sure our audience understands for those who haven't heard you in the past. Yeah. We ain't talking about you. You never had any issues with alcohol. You were talking about family members. You want to talk about yourself. So Thank you. Because you, you, you said my issues with alcohol. I want no, to make sure everybody my, understands. My history. No, you we, didn't we have talked any issues. about it many right, times right. on the show. Yeah, and yeah I, I just want to make sure they that. knew. I've yeah, never right. had any issues with alcohol because yes, my family had so many issues with alcohol right. that Exactly. That actually was the best thing that ever happened to me. So thank you for I saying that. I, yeah. I just wanted to make sure mm -hmm. of that. Number two, number two, Ty Lawson is going to help them pace-wise, too, because he pushes the ball up. He creates tempo. Not only that, he can get to the hole at will, and he can hit the occasional yeah. jump shot. He shot about 43% from the field. So I just think that this is a significant upgrade where he's concerned <laughs> And I think that's a huge, huge plus for Houston. Houston could very well be back in the Western Conference Finals if Ty Lawson, mm -hmm. if Ty Lawson, that is Ty Lawson, shows up. But we have to keep our eyes on James Harden. Mm -hmm. We have to keep our eyes on him because we know he's an MVP candidate. We know that in some people's eyes, he deserved league MVP. He was absolutely sensational last year. We know what he can do on a basketball court. But we also know what he did. And that closeout game six, it was a horrific performance. Yep. And now he's making news for other reasons, which I ain't none of my business, but people are putting in the news as personal life. And I just, you know, it, it could be distractions. Okay? Ain't nothing lawless or anything like that nope. going on. But it, it, distractions can, can creep up. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he's going to have to watch that because he's still chasing the championship. That's about it. I think collectively we all hope it's a fresh new start for him yep. there in H-Town, both personally and professionally. After the break, he is a five-time SEC champion and a four-time national champion. Alabama head coach Nick Saban is here and will join the task. Roll Tide!